When we say in English, a person is ruminating on something, ah, it means he is chewing, he is regurgitating his thoughts like a cow, thinking, pondering, considering, memorizing, reciting, praying over it again and again. But instead of food, he's recalling and reciting the words of Scripture over and over again. And here you find Jesus teaching us that instead of eating grass, our spiritual food that we chew on, that we feed on, is really the Word of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So what bread is to the natural man, God's Word is to our inner man. So you see something. Meditation is our spiritual digestive system. It's our spiritual digestive system. When we chew the Word, memorizing it, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down on green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. You see, as we are memorizing, reciting, thinking, praying through it, we are processing our spiritual food, squeezing out all the nutrients, all the blessings, all the revelations, and then digesting it. And as food, this word is absorbed into our system, into this temple of the Holy Spirit, becoming a part of us. And we find ourselves living by the word all day long. We find ourselves living in the word until, like Jesus Christ, effortlessly, instinctively, automatically, no matter what we are going through, the words of God will flow out of our mouths in our prayers, in our conversations, in, in our meditation. When we cast out demons, when we come against the devil in spiritual warfare, you will not just be nice ideas or nice thoughts. You will be the Word of God, the double-edged sword that will flow out of our mouth. They will break through every situation. Unfortunately, we don't do that, right? Whenever we read a Bible and we hear a good sermon, we can get very excited. Oh, praise God. You know, uh, Pastor, the scripture that I heard today jumps out at me. Oh, it is so good. Wow, this verse really speaks to me. It really has become alive to me. And then we stop there. And a few days later, what happens? A few days later, we totally cannot remember the sermon or the Bible passage anymore. Why? Because we didn't take the time to fully digest it, to squeeze out the blessing, the revelation, the illumination, the understanding. We, we never squeeze out all the nutrients that's, that will spiritually help us from the Word of God. Jesus wants the Word to find a home in us, Will you let the Word of God find a home in your heart of hearts? You see, one day, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees. So let's go to John chapter 8 and look at verse 37. Jesus says to the Pharisees, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Now, this is really amazing. Can you imagine these religious leaders they read the Bible every day. They read the Bible religiously. But yet, the Word of God has no place in them because the roots did not go down deep into their mind, into their hearts, into their soul, into their spirit. The Word did not grip them. It did not pierce through the soul and grip into their spirit. Well, it is not so for the one who meditates on God's Word day and night. It is not so. Psalms chapter 1, it says, He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So you realize this person is not affected by the heat or the drought of the season. Even in bad times, in very difficult times, when it seems like all hope is gone, all strength is gone, this person is still growing and blossoming 
bearing fruit and prospering. Whatever he does, he or she prospers. And then by meditation, we are growing the roots into the, uh, the roots of the word deeper and deeper into us. And that word deep in us will steady our heart and stabilize our soul. You see, such that we will never dry up. And this was how Jesus Christ himself stood so firm. Look, nobody has ever gone through trials, testings, tribulations, suffering, the way Jesus did. But he never wavered. He stood so firm. And he was truly an evergreen tree. Truly an evergreen tree. You know why? He used the word of God even while enduring the infinite agony on the cross. He was always using the Word of God. And I want to say this, if we want to be Christ-like, if you want to be Jesus-like, and you want to be able to endure the greatest pain, and we all know this, the greatest pain is never physical, it's mental, it's emotional. If we want to be able to be like Jesus, even on the cross, He's able to endure it and stay victorious and stay positive. Then we must follow Jesus by anchoring our roots deep into the Scripture as He did. 